All right, Radical community, today we are diving into a topic that has literally been a long time coming. When I sat down to do this topic and to write out script for the topic, I was like, have I done a video on this before? Have I? I know I haven't done a podcast episode on it because this is so new, but I don't know if I've done a video on it, which is kind of hard to believe. And that topic is, drum roll please, forgiveness. <laughs> forgiveness. I have spent the last few weeks doing some market research with uh, Christian women and just trying to figure out What's the holdup in this area? And one thing that became abundantly clear is that oftentimes we don't know how to take that first step or what that first step is and what the practical solutions are to being able to just shake these emotions so that you can finally move on. So today I'm going to give a little bit of insight into my own process moving towards forgiveness, specifically when I was separated and going through a divorce and give you some, some practical tools for how you can start to move towards God and therefore towards forgiveness in this process. Before I do that, just a quick reminder that I do have a free Facebook community available for Christian women just like you who likely grew up what we considered churched, grew up in the church, and now they're trying to figure out their relationship with God in a very real way and are just trying to do the best that they can. <laughs> if that sounds like something that you're looking for and you'd like to lock arms with other women like yourself, hop over in our Facebook group. It's facebook.com slash groups slash a radical community to join us there. All right. So let's get to it. All right. So when I was separated, ooh, child, it was a ghetto. My emotions just kept playing this back and forth game, right? One minute I'm cool um, and I'm contemplating like maybe I want to work this thing out. Another day, I'm completely upset <laughs> and infuriated. Other days, I'm just like, whatever. I just want to move on with my life. And I just remember that time being so convoluted. Like, I was back and forth all the time in my head around what I actually wanted for myself. There were a lot of different voices in my life that were contributing to the convolution at this time, I was doing what I knew to do, right? I was still going to church. I was still seeking God. I'm trying to search out scriptures and plans and things so that I can be in his will and be right before him. But I keep playing hopscotch <laughs> with the emotions. I keep going around and around and I'm not in a place where I feel settled and where I can actually move on and it wasn't really until I started talking to other women about this that I realized that a huge part of it was forgiveness a huge part of it was me taking back um, my own power to be free a huge part of it was being able to release someone from having the authority to free me and deciding that I had the authority to free myself I just had to put in the work to get to a place where I could truly say I feel good and I can walk away with this and I can from this and I can move forward and truly say there are no hard feelings. OK, there are things that I wanted to see that I resolved if it never happens. I'm OK and I can still move forward and God in his grace still allowed those things to happen. But I knew that I had forgiven when me being able to move forward was no longer contingent upon what I needed from somebody else. That's a word for you. So I want to give you three things that I did to practically move towards God and towards forgiveness. First, I got quiet. I stopped looking to everyone and everything else to give me answers and I tapped in to hear from God himself, okay? 
I booked a trip to the mountains. I got me an Airbnb. I let my friends know, hey, I'm out for the weekend. I just need to have some me and God time and really get quiet before him. And I got out of there. Okay. Um, One of the God winks that happened uh, during this time was that when I booked the Airbnb, one of my friends told me like, I just stayed at that Airbnb a couple weeks ago when I did a similar trip. So that was just a reassurance from God that like, I'm with you and I'm going to meet you there. (laughs) And so I let them know, you know, where I was going. And I decided that like, this was going to be a me and God type weekend pressing in. Um, And like I said, my mind had become so entangled with so many different things that I just didn't have clarity. My mind was always running. And I'm reminded of a scripture in Isaiah 30, 21, and it says, your own ears will hear him right behind you. A voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. And there was way too much noise in my life, (laughs) way too many thoughts going on in my head for me to ever be able to hear that voice. But eventually I did. And so I got away and, and I lived alone. And so technically I could have just spent a weekend alone in my house, but it was important for me to get away from the scene (laughs) to go somewhere different and to, um, just be intentional and creating a different space for me to be able to block out everything else. Right. So that was the first thing that I did. And that's my first point. I got quiet. I I made room for, for, for the quiet, (laughs) for me to get quiet. Second point is I listened. So I got to the Airbnb on a Friday afternoon. I picked up food enough for the weekend. So that way I didn't have to run in and out and um, have my time broken up in that way. And that first evening when I got there to the Airbnb, I just chilled. I just had like some woo time. It wasn't super spiritual. I just woo watched some movies, watched some Netflix, and just had just a me and God night. The next morning, I got up Saturday morning, and I had what would be considered for me a pretty typical quiet time. And after I finished up that quiet time, just journaling through thoughts and kind of releasing, I went out and I sat on the patio and I still remember it. I can still see the the picture that I used for a blog post that I wrote from this weekend in my mind um, with the patio looking out to the mountains. And I went out there. And I just finally sat down and I stopped talking and I just listened. I just sat there on the patio, taking in the scenery, listening to nature, and I just quieted my mind and I listened for the Lord. Almost immediately, I heard him say, your marriage is over. Almost immediately and I just broke down and I just wept and I just wept and I just wept. It was comforting to finally have an answer. The answer sucked, you know, Um, and I knew that it was going to be hard going through that. But I just let all of the emotion out right there with God. And that was the first time that I had actually sat to listen with a still mind in a different place and just had that type of intentionality. It's one thing to get quiet. It's a different thing to listen. You could be driving in your car with the music off. And so it's technically quiet. But when your thoughts are going and then you get to the place and you like, dang, I ain't really even paid attention to taking all the turns and stuff because your mind has been going. That's not listening. (laughs) So you can get quiet without listening. You need to get quiet and listen, which means that at some point, you got to stop talking and you got to stop telling God about what's going on with you. And you got to ask him, okay, God, what would you, what would you say to me? You can play med- meditative music. If that helps with some background noise, uh, be intentional about clearing your thoughts, just sit and not think you can focus your mind on God and his qualities, as opposed to the emotions that you're experiencing and just sit there and just be and allow the Holy Spirit to speak. Last and final point is that I self-examined. Okay. One of the most important things for me was to be able to answer this question of, okay, God, how did I get here? And when I started to put the mirror in my own 
um, face as opposed to shining the mirror in the opposite direction. It freed me a lot. Community was a huge part of this process because it was one of my friends who recommended to me the workbook that ended up changing my life. <laughs> I used that workbook to sit with God every morning to self-examine, to take a look at what was going on with me, to figure out what was it that I brought to the table. And once I had such clear vision of, okay, this is how I was moving and then this is how he was moving and that's what made for this collapse, I was like, oh, that's what happened. Okay. And that just really helped me because no longer did I need anything from the offender in order to say, I feel good about moving on. When I had sober judgment and clarity about what just happened, and maybe you played a part in this, and maybe it was just them being straight up wrong, and that's okay. <laughs> like, that's you being able to say, yeah, they was tripping. Yeah, they was flat out wrong. A huge part of it was also me tapping into what part of my heart did this break? What part of me feels offended and why? What does this offense reveal about my values? Like I just really had to tap into why is this bothering me so much? What is it about who I am that this presses up against? For me, it was about loyalty. It was about the life that I thought that I was going to have that was now being ripped from me. It was about all the ways that had been communicated to me through the actions that I, I wasn't important and I didn't have the place in his life that I felt like I should have as his wife. Those were the things that were hurtful. And so getting in touch with those things, again, just helped me put on different lenses and have such different perspective where I could soberly say, okay, I see, I see what happened here. And that truly enabled me to move on. Um, like I mentioned, I had intentional time with God every single morning. It was me and God and that workbook. And I was committed to doing the work because I was really tired of going in circles and I wanted to be free and I didn't want my freedom to be contingent on somebody else. Okay. So if this is an area that you feel stuck in, I invite you to have a discovery call with me. If you feel like you're one of those people who keeps going round and round and in circles and you just cannot figure this thing out and it may be good to have an extra set of ears on this situation to help you discern how the spirit is moving, I'm here for you. I definitely encourage you to take some time alone with God for yourself because it's important for you to hear his own voice. But God is all about community. He's all about relationships. We know that we weren't made to do this walk alone. So if you are tired of going around this mountain, let's lock arms, sis. You can go to a radicalrelationship.com backslash coaching and book a free discovery call. And we can just hash out some of these things that you're experiencing and see if coaching might be a good fit for helping you get to the other side. Until next time, y'all, I'm out. Bye.